Let's take a look at measuring volume. But first off, we need to understand what volume is. So let's start with a simple definition. Volume is the measure of how much space an object or substance takes up. In this video, we're going to look at how we can determine the volume of regular solids, liquids, and irregular solids. But before we dive in, let's just clarify what we mean by regular solids. In this circumstance, we're talking about solid materials like cubes and rectangular prisms where we can easily measure the length and the width and the height and use a formula to convert that or calculate the volume of the object. Regular solids also include other shapes like spheres, cylinders, and pyramids. However, we're not going to do those in this particular video. We are, as I mentioned, going to look at liquids and irregular solids as well, but let's begin with regular solids. To figure out the volume of a regular solid, we need to use the volume formula. And that formula states that you can calculate the volume by multiplying the length of the solid by the width of the solid by the height of the solid. So let's look at a simple example here. If I were to measure one side of this cube and to find that it was 3.2 centimeters, I know that the width of this cube, because it's a cube, will also be 3.2 centimeters as well as the height. And so by using my formula, I know I need to multiply these three measurements together. So volume is going to be 3.2 times 3.2 times 3.2. And doing that math gives us a volume of 32.768 centimeters cubed. And essentially what we're saying is that within this regular solid, we can fit 32.768 cubic centimeters of space. And so that's how we would calculate the volume for a regular solid. But liquids are different. We can't really measure the length, width, and height of a liquid. That doesn't make sense. So in this circumstance, we need to make a measurement. And we do that using a tool called a graduated cylinder. The volume of a liquid can be measured using a graduated cylinder. And measurements are typically recorded in units called milliliters. Here's what a graduated cylinder looks like. It's a tall and narrow column, and it's got measurements along the side. And those measurements are going to vary depending on what graduated cylinder you're using. They might be 1 milliliter, or 5, or 10, or 0.5. It really depends. But you would simply pour your liquid in, and you would make a measurement. However, you're going to notice something interesting here, which is that the top of the water is curved in something that's called a meniscus. When water is poured into the graduated cylinder, the surface curves downwards as a result of the properties of the water. The simple rule to follow is that you always measure from the bottom of the meniscus, or the bottom of the curve. And that's how you determine the volume of a liquid. But what if we want to do a solid? This poses a problem because an irregular solid cannot easily be measured. We can't use the formula that we discussed earlier because there is no specific length or width or height. And so we're going to use a method known as water displacement. And this method simply says that the volume of a solid that has an irregular shape, think of a rock, can be measured by submerging it in a graduated cylinder that contains water. And you will measure the amount of displacement that occurs, or in other words, the amount that the water level rises when you submerge the solid. So let's take a look at an example. Here I have my irregular solid, this small crystal here, and I have a graduated cylinder containing some water. And you can see the meniscus there. So I would start by measuring the volume of the water before inserting the irregular solid. Again, I would measure from the bottom of the meniscus, and then I would drop the solid into the graduated cylinder. And what we'll see happen is that the water level will rise. The volume of that irregular solid is going to be equal to the increase in the water level, or in other words, the amount of displacement that the solid caused. And so that's how we're going to calculate the volume for irregular solids.
So just to quickly review, regular solids, we use the volume formula, length times width times height. Liquids, we use a graduated cylinder, and remember to always measure from the bottom of the curve or the meniscus. And finally, irregular solids, you would use water displacement, where you drop it into a graduated cylinder and measure the change in the level of the liquid. And so that's how we measure our volumes. If you're interested, you'll find a worksheet in the description. Thanks for watching.